Hello, and welcome to Student Affairs Now. I'm your host, Dr. Glenn de Guzman. So I'm coming to you live from San Diego, California at the International Comic-Con Convention, and it is just a zoo out here. So if you remember back in 1997, the movie Titanic, Jack Dawson, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, he said, I love waking up in the morning, not knowing what is going to happen or who I'm going to meet, where I'm going to wind up. And that is going to be my mantra today as I cruise and just hang out with a few thousand of my fellow geeks at this convention. But within this community of fellow geeks, there is even a smaller community of student affairs professionals who do attend this conference for a variety of different reasons. And so in today's episode, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be exploring and talking to student affairs professionals who come to Comic Cons and get engaged in this in this culture, in this community, and, and just sort of talk to them about how their convention ties into their student affairs professional work. Student Affairs Now is the premier podcast of online learning community for thousands of us who work in, alongside, or adjacent to the field of higher education and student affairs. We release ep new episodes every Wednesday. Um, and if you want more details on this episode or on past episodes, please go to our website, studentaffairsnow.com. This episode is sponsored by Simplicity, a true partner. Simplicity supports all aspects of student life with technology platforms that empower institutions to make data-driven decisions. And if you want to stay tuned for the end of the, at the end of this podcast, I'll tell you more information about Simplicity. Again, my name is Glenda Guzman. Let's go. I am so excited to run into these two people at the San Diego Library because if, for, for listeners, um, these two were on episode two of Student Affairs Now back in 2020. And so let's do quick introductions really back. quickly. Yeah. So let's start with you, Alex. Awesome. Hi, I'm Alex Belisario. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the executive director for College Student Life at UC Santa Cruz. Very cool. Awesome. And hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Emily Sandoval. I also use she, her pronouns. I'm the associate vice provost for student affairs at the University of Southern California. Now, these two are, in my opinion, they, they are like at this next level when it comes to Comic-Con and higher education <laughs> professionals. So we're really, I'm really excited to have the two of you on really quickly. So you two just came out of a panel session, right? Yes. Yeah. So tell us about yes. that panel. Well, you moderated it. So. I did moderate it. So we called it, it was Geek Ed, the Marvels. So it was focused on women leaders in higher education. And we're all actually women leaders of color. Um, so it was a really, really awesome conversation to have with amazing women about how we navigate the university space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did you want your audiences to gain? You had a large audience. Yes. Like, what did you want your audience to gain? Like, like let's yeah. let's tie in higher ed language. What yeah. learning outcomes did you want them to get out of that? Absolutely. I think that. First and foremost, we wanted to talk about presence and that there are mm -hmm. women leaders, and as Emily said, women leaders of color in higher education, but also that there are geeks and nerds and proud geeks and nerds. We're card carrying members of that particular club mm -hmm. um, and that we are able to use our love of science fiction, fantasy, gaming, mm -hmm. anime, mm -hmm. TV, uh, movies to help our work and help our connection with students and create community in the places where we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. You hit so many genres, and I remember back in 2020, you actually defined uh, what it meant to be a geek, yeah. what it meant to be a nerd. Yes. You remember that about yeah, obsession circles, and all the yes. different things. If the you want to, I mean, you, you and you did your dissertation on. Yes. So, can you speak a little bit about like nerd identity, geek identity? Just refresh for for our newest well, listeners. Obviously. And I would say I'm going to start by saying it's also very personal, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you identify as a nerd, awesome, geek, awesome. The way I kind of structured it around um, a framework for my dissertation was, you know, geeks um, obsess about something. So they are highly intelligent people, but really obsess about Pokemon, Star Wars, video games, Disney, anything. Um, clearly Star Wars, as I've dressed as Leia right now. <laughs> but um, nerds might not be as obsessive, but have that like brain intellect. Um, and I think it's also, we'd be remiss if we don't say we grew up in the 70s and 80s where being a nerd or geek wasn't really a term but nerd dweeb it was very um derogatory it was like oh we're gonna make fun of you because you're a nerd because you like these things and now it's our superpower especially as women in higher education entering spaces that are sometimes male dominated um 
I find that being a geek, I, I own it. My office is covered in geek stuff. So now being a geek is my superpower and it's something I draw strength from. It definitely went from having that stigma of being bad to the whole geek is chic yes. and kind of embracing that with our work and ourselves. Yeah. The two of you are, in my opinion, innovators in this space. At Comic-Con, you've been uh, um, staples. You've, you've, you've had a lot of influence. You've brought so many higher ed professionals, non-higher ed professionals, librarians, educators into this fold. And so can you, can you like, if you look back at the, I mean, we're talking years now, right? Yes. And, and since your involvement. 2011. Since 2011 for yeah. you. Yeah. 2011. 2011 for both of you. Yeah. So that's a long time. Like, if if you were able to just look and see, like, how the, the impact and influence, why is there such a an, an, uh, synergy between c this Comic-Con convention and higher education, student mm -hmm. affairs? Like, what what is, what's, what, why is there such synergy? Why is there such intersection? I think we have um, a lot of people who work in higher education who may have felt ostracized when they were younger or may have had interests that others didn't necessarily share. Um, and so they're finding a place and community here with us. And, you know, our geek ed started in 2011, but we, we went to Comic-Con before that, right? So we had that interest and we go to higher education conferences. And so the, the other folks who were sort of OG with us um, were like, you know what, this is just like any other conference, except it's talking about a different kind of interest that we have. So why don't we try to see if we can submit a panel like you would for a, like an ASPA or an ACPA conference yeah. and see if it'll be accepted and it was and that's really how it started so we all I mean we talked about gateway interests and things that help us um, to be understood or things that we found that were interesting and then that connection to our work um, and it's just we've been able to um, find so many more members of the community since we started doing that because they'll come to panels or they came to Comic-Con also like um, independently, personally, yeah. not necessarily as a part of this work. Um, and then as we talk to them and we meet them, like we all come together. And so we really try to um, find some really good representation in our panels and then involve people so that they can become a part of Comic-Con or maybe they've even seen Comic-Con yeah. mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, I was saying in the panel today that, you know, I'll talk to students about Comic-Con. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you've heard of it. And they're like, yes, we've heard of it. We know what Comic-Con is. But I think that's true for a lot of professionals as well. And so finding ways to tie those interests together is really powerful. Yeah. And I would add, I think in 2011, it's like we, one of our colleagues, Ryan McRae, he left the field, but he created Geek Week at Cal State San Marcos. And that first year, Brian McDonald was in the audience and then took Geek Week to Rutgers. And we're like, oh, cool, now we're East Coast, right? So we were geeking out about that. But it was really initially just those of us that were really passionate about helping students find connection. And it all was about connection. And that's when L Day put the seed in my brain to go back to school and write my dissertation. I was like, no one's gonna take me seriously. And they did, you know? So I got to write my full dissertation about helping students find community and connection and network around geek identity and geek culture. And it, over the years, um, as you mentioned, we've expanded. We've had other higher ed folks from across the nation. Um, and we are what I call the Geek Ed Collective. And that's gonna be really important coming soon. We're finally launching our website, the Geek Ed Collective. So you'll hear a little bit about our origin stories, but more importantly, we're gonna amplify the work that our colleagues are doing around geek culture. So those of us that have wrote dissertations or thesis, there's many of us now. Um, I wanna elevate podcasts that are out there, um, presentations, conference presentations, but also if folks are interested in getting connected, that's where you'll be able to find us. And hopefully we were just encouraged to do the panel we just did and submit it for NASPA National. And I didn't even think about that because sometimes it, we've been doing it so long, I forget that higher ed as a whole would also benefit from these conferences, not just those of us that identify as geeks. I agree with you on that one. And, and for the listeners, we'll put the um, geek ed information um, in the um, the notes. So if you go to our website, you can check that out. So let's have a little fun here. Okay. So you <laughs> you two have been to lots of cons. So yes. let's start with cosplay. Yes. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm thumbs up, but believe it or not, this is the first time I've actually cosplayed. And so we are. I am Return of the Jedi, Princess Leia, and Dor. Um, I'm just missing my little Ewok. <laughs> but I've had 
I have a coat to use to cosplay as Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh -huh. And I always said it's too hot in San Diego to cosplay in a full coat. Although, why is it raining at this con? I don't know. Yeah. San Diego is going on, right? But yeah, normally I'm big into just my geek themed shirts that show off my geek passions. Yeah. But I'm all for cosplay. I wish I had the time and intentionality. Shot Disney yeah. folks, I did not make this. <laughs> it's true. And one of our other members, Brian McDonald, if you haven't ever seen his oh, Predator, Predator cosplay, it's epic. Um, I'm a big fan of cosplay, although similarly, it, San Diego is too hot for me to be really into it. But I do wear themed t-shirts at work all the time. I think I spent my first five years cosplaying and similarly just got too hot. Right? So not anymore. Yeah. For those who are listening, go to the YouTube site to see um, Emily's um, Leia outfit from Return of the Jenna. <laughs> I totally... Do I thought I thought she uh, she was cosplaying as someone else, and yeah, I got a little I got a little uh, a black like, for that one. On, I know, I know. <laughs> I love Star Wars, and I, I blew that one. Anyways, um, so uh, you know, again, this there's so many different presentations, panels. So mm -hmm. when you come to the con, and when you're not presenting or, or coordinating, or you know, and whatnot, yeah. what is the thing that you love? Like, what is your passion? What are you obsessed with? Oh, well, and sometimes it's hard to find panels on things that I'm still obsessed about, but because yeah. um, Buffy is always going to be one of them. But I am a geek because of my older brother and Star Wars has always been a part of my life. So OG trilogy, um, I absolutely love. And also Lord of the Rings. I love the Lord of the Rings trilogies. Um, I enjoyed The Hobbit, but the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I love. Mm -hmm went to New Zealand as my bucket list in 2018 after I finished my dissertation. That was the gift to myself to see Middle Earth, right. um, hiked Mount Doom, all of that. So that is anything that I see with Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, I'm going to try to connect with or go to. And I got to meet one of the actors who was in the movies yesterday. Oh, totally oh yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember seeing Ian McKell, McKell, um, McKellen, Ian McKellen yeah. um, outside of the Hall H, like at 11 p.m. at night, just engaging the folks who were spending the night yeah. outside i was like wow that's really cool so, that's amazing yeah mm -hmm. yeah early in the dc days i saw jason momoa when he was oh. here, like new as aquaman and i was like okay that's the kind of representation i can appreciate um <laughs> <laughs> that way that's but, awesome. yeah i think um, in addition to panels i really like going into exhibits and talking with artists mm. i have a couple of favorite artists now like karen halley and art um, Nidhi Chinani, who's someone who uh, graduated from UCSC, also has some beautiful art out there. Um, I went to, I think it was La Petite Elephant, and it was Filipino oh, art. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was like, so it, it moved me because this line, I tried to get into like six different times. It was always capped until the last time. And 90, easily 90% of the people in line, I would say were Filipino, like mm -hmm. they appeared to be. And so that was so beautiful to me. Um, it's those kinds of connections that I love, mm. but you know, similarly, Marvel panels I love. Kevin Smith I find is just hilarious when you can get into a Kevin mm. Smith panel. Yeah, it's just amazing. And we've been to a number of the like women in the arts. Um, they'll do some leadership panels in that way, and I, I love to go to those. Entertainment too. Weekly used to do a yeah. women in pop right? culture. We've been to a few of those over there. Yeah, they're really great. Well, I thank you for your time. Thank ah, you for dropping in. Thanks for chatting with us. Of, yes, are you, you kidding? Of course. <laughs> I am I'm with royalty here. So <laughs> say bye to everybody bye, and uh, everybody. enjoy the rest of your con. Thanks. Hey everybody. So guess who I just ran into at the uh, Comic Con Conference for Educators and Librarians at the San Diego Library, part of Comic Con. <laughs> Let's do some quick intros. Who are you? Yeah, so hi, my name's Emily. I use the She series. I'm the Violence Prevention and Education Program Coordinator at the Center for Support and Intervention. At what university? At UC Berkeley. At UC Sorry. Berkeley. Go Bears. Go Bears. Go Bears. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm Al Day. I am the Interim Assistant Vice Chancellor for Student Engagement and Support at UC Berkeley as well. I use he, him, his pronouns. Wonderful. Now, the two of you just came out of doing a panel session here as part of Comic Con. Tell us a little bit about what the, what the title was, and I love the fact that you, you were able to integrate this into pop culture, into comics and graphic novels. Yeah, so I had this idea of thinking about um, bystander intervention in, in comic books. So the, the panel was, what would Aunt May do um, supporting characters in bystander intervention? And just this idea of you don't have to have superpowers to be that person in your community to kind of 
keep it safer and promote like pro-social behaviors and things like that. So yeah, it was, it was really exciting. And Al was kind of excited about that. I was really excited yeah. about it. We've been doing these panels for about 12 years now. And we always look for new people to bring us uh, topic ideas, but generally they're kind of the same topic ideas over and over. Right. And so when Emily brought me this, I was really excited because it's such a new and interesting way to talk about the bystander intervention model. And I was really excited. So and yeah. it went really well. It did. I, I was able to stay for the entire time and it did. It went really, really well. Now, what's interesting for the two of you is that this is your first Comic-Con, Emily, right? Yeah, it's my first San Diego Comic-Con. I went to the one in Chicago and I'll just say a little different. This is an advanced convention, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, so this yeah. is my first San Diego Comic Con, and I've been loving it. It's great. And then, but Al on the other side. Oh yeah, for me, uh, as far as Comic Con International in San Diego, this is my twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. uh, if you count the years that we were uh, remote, and but I did panels when we were remote, so I'm gonna count uh, my twenty fifth Comic Con. First one was ninety eight. Goodness oh, gracious! I know that I've been to only a little, just a little over ten, so I'm like a mid-level professional. Yeah, yeah. So one of the interesting things about um, Comic Con is, and and the purpose really of this podcast, this specific episode, is the fact that there's so many educators, uh, student affairs professionals, um, librarians who come to this convention because of the opportunity to um, connect um, what we do as educators with the the children, the college students that we work with. Can you speak to a little bit more about like how you see that intersection uh, between um, what what you're passionate about and with what you do as a, as a profession? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of power in storytelling and it just really can empower you as a person. Um, when I come out of like movies of Marvel, like especially um, the Avengers and things like that, I come out like with this energy of like, I want to do something, I want to like, what can I do? And the truth is you could do a lot. And so I think that that was kind of like me marrying these two ideas of um, what are we seeing in comic books and what are those like characters on the side though that are doing to help support the hero? And the hero can be the, we talked a little bit about this, the hero can be like the survivor themselves of the harm, right? What can we do on that side? Having the responsibility like Uncle Ben says of, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, we all have that, right? Um, yeah. So that's kind of where that was coming in to the work that I do for violence prevention. Yeah, and for, yeah, for me, just particularly, I, I always say that my morals and values were, were sort of instilled into, upon me by reading Superman and Batman comics when I was a kid. Um, and I have taken those morals and values, and that's sort of why I chose education, why I chose higher education and the work that we do in particular. So for me, the question is less, how do we integrate them, but how do I stop <laughs> and create sort of barriers and boundaries between them. Because for me, it, that's what the work's always been around about is the, this sort of Superman-based idea that if you are privileged, you use that privilege on behalf of other people. Right. I, I'm loving the fact that we got Superman references. We got Uncle Ben, Aunt May from Spider-Man. Now, in your presentation, you, you actually um, delve deeper into the care model, right? So the care model obviously is the... Yeah, so C for confronting the situation, A for alerting others, R for redirecting attention, and then E for engage after. And it's not like a step-by-step -step process for intervening. It's more of like a menu list of items, if you will, of just letting people know there's multiple ways you can kind of make the world a better place and intervene to help potential dangerous situations from happening. Yeah. Right. And you, and you really, you like you used Uncle Ben reference, yeah. just really kind of... Um, uh, pull the audience in and I could see there, there, the one for the listeners there was a large crowd in there it was a good number of folks listening in and people yeah, we're all the way in the library so. and you're in the yeah, we're in the library and you know <laughs> over the years the the numbers are growing and increasing and so I do see like a lot of educators trying different um, venues or um, methods to really reach their students so mm -hmm. I thought that was really amazing so first con first San Diego con yeah. 25th San Diego con Want to know what has been your favorite thing thus far at this San Diego Comic Con? Yeah, so I'm a big nerd when it comes to like Dungeons and Dragons, to be nice. honest. So um, the McElroy brothers are they're my boys. So I was able to see a Q and A with them, and then they actually did a, a podcast uh, taping live at the Balboa Theater. So that was like my favorite thing. Seeing Brendan Lee Mulligan was like life changing. <laughs> so anyway, that was me. I've only, I, I have not been a Star Trek fan like my whole life. I've only this year gotten into like Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks. And uh, Paramount had a had a, a 
booth where you could sit in the captain's chair and they would do a push in and you would do like the engage thing. So mm-hmm. I did one where I was like tired and drinking coffee and just like done with it. And that, that was awesome. It was I really love cool. that. Oh my God, I have to see that <laughs> yeah. video. That's amazing. Now, Al, I want, I want to finish with this one last question before we kind of uh, check out here. So uh, October 2020, mm-hmm. you were actually on the second episode I was. of Student Affairs Now um, with others who are actually right now inside that room doing a panel session on um, uh, women of color and hydro- women of color leaders in higher education, right? But back in 2020, when you did that episode with me, obviously one of the things that, in my opinion, you have been a, if not the primary person who's brought so many folks in student affairs to come to Comic-Con. If you can give me like the 30 second, 45 second pitch on the, how, how are you doing that? Like why is, what, how do you see the connection between student affairs and Comic-Con or Comic-Con conventions? Yeah, I mean, it's all about what we do, like the whole Geek Ed Collective. It's really about, we all exist in a world of popular culture. It's the language we use to talk to each other. It's how we sort of develop our morals and ethics. And in student affairs, we can sometimes forget the rest of the world that we live in and that we exist within this context. And this is really a way, I think, to keep student affairs folks connected with the rest of the world and see the application of the work that we do and how sort of a general group of people really react to the things that are important to us. So I'm super stoked about it. It's sort of my professional goal. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time, you too, and enjoy the rest of your con. I am on the corner of Park and Jay, and who do I run into? <laughs> Let's do some quick introductions. Let's start with you, Wendy. Hi, my name is Wendy Sasaki. I use she and they series pronouns. And who are you? Hey, David Surratt. Uh, I use the he, him series. What do you do work-wise? You gotta, you gotta tell the listeners on Student Affairs now what you do. So, Mr. David, give you go first. Yeah, sure. So, I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students at the University of Oklahoma, and I'm a, a distinguished lecturer in the College of Education. Uh, I work for the University of California at San Diego, and I am the Associate Director for Asian Pacific Islander Middle Eastern the SDM American Programs and Services. And um, because this is Comic-Con, at Comic-Con I am a staff volunteer, and I was the district coordinator uh, with the guest, uh, I'm sorry, studio relations team. Studio relations team. What is it, wait. So what does that mean? Do you get to rub elbows with creators, actors, writers? Okay, so this year was difficult because of the strike. But typically what we're doing is uh, we're doing the behind the scene things that make sure that people on the are, who are on the really large panels for usually larger television shows and movies get from all the things they need to get to so that they can be on stage, get to their signings, um, do press and other things like that on time. Wonderful. So. I gotta, I gotta share with the audience. So I attended my first Comic Con a little bit over a decade ago, and Wendy is one of the primary. Was the re- one of the main reasons <laughs> to get me to Dakota Comic Con, right? You got, I got you in for free. You got me in yeah. for free back in the day, right? Yeah. And back in the day, I needed it for sure. <laughs> so, we, so obviously, the the, point, the purpose of this this podcast is kind of to check in with the fact that there's so many higher education professionals and student affairs folks who come to Comic Con, right? So you, you, well, both of you are in student affairs. You got me to come to Student Affairs. We're interviewing folks. Can you tell me a little bit about why is there why is there such synergy or connection between Student Affairs and this convention? Sure. Oh, I I know in the department that I volunteer for, there's a lot of Student Affairs folks, and uh, I think it's easiest to train folks who are doing that to do what we're doing, right? A lot of them have been in residence life, and stuff happens, so they're used to being on call. So. I, I remember training one of the new volunteers one time who was a hall director and he's like, you know, I'm really nervous. I think I'm going to mess up. I was like, no, you're on call. You got this. This is the schedule. Something will go wrong. We'll figure it out because that's what we do. And he goes, oh, I get it. They gave us a mess of a panel the first year and he got it because he has this background. He's used to doing this stuff and it was pretty easy to get him to go like, all right, this is what's going on. And I was really thankful that's who I was paired with for that group. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, David? Yeah, no, I'd say in addition to being able to handle uh, complex problems, issues, that kind of thing, there's a convergence between knowing our full selves and identity and being authentic leaders in higher ed spaces. And that means bringing in our fandom, our geekdom, our nerddom into spaces like this. So it's been great to be a part of a group of educators and student affairs professionals who actually use their uh, pop culture knowledge and their fandom in their work all the time. Well, let's start going that direction. So. Both of you now are experienced presenters, right? <laughs> so I know, Wendy, you just, 
that was an incredible panel that you did. You want to share? Let's start with you, and then Dave will talk about the presentations that you have done and will be doing. But Wendy, you just came out of um, like the the convention floor and did a yeah. um, was on a panel. Let's share a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, we were in the main hall today, and uh, we were on a panel about uh, the contest for Asian American uh, graphic novels and comics. So there were two comic book creators that were on the panel, and they talked a little bit about. Uh, this, their process in creating stories that have Asian American themes and people. And uh, the other three of us are professionals in higher education. And we talked about how we use that on the other side. Like, how are we taking these narratives um, and connecting them with students and staff and faculty around um, how they're seeing themselves reflected, what their identity is, and uh, the ways that we use those things to help students either understand the historical nature, some of the racism that folks are facing, um, different ways that people are processing their identities, and um, other pieces of history that maybe they have read a little bit about in, his in history books and things like that, but seeing graphic novels and depictions of conversations of people, of what those places look like for folks, um, as they're going through and learning this stuff has been a lot easier for them to process. Right. Actually, in the panel, you referenced um, Secret Identities, the anthology, yes. and that was that was such a, I thought, groundbreaking piece of work back, that was like 2009, 2009? Um, so they were at Comic-Con in 2009, oh, okay. so I had bought the book right before that, and I brought it because they were signing, and they looked at the book and they're like, oh, you got a sticker on here from Borders, so you had this book before. And that book, yeah. that book was... Um, Oh, well, that graphic novel was composed of stories, uh, graphic stories that was written by Asian American right. creators. Right. Right. Yeah. So there are different um, comic book artists and uh, things like that who were typically not writing Asian American superheroes, and they were asked for that to write Asian American superheroes and uh, put that together into a book. And so there were these different ways for people to talk about what would they write if the superhero was Asian American and things like that. And telling a lot of stories and history, right? Yeah, which is really neat. They were mixing those things too. Yeah, so, yeah. David. Um, Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. I thought I'm moving here, man. Hold on. Hey, brother. Sorry. We're good. No, thank you. It's a spare one. I'm good. Thank you, though. I appreciate it, man. Have a good night. That sounds great. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah, you too. Good. I'm good, brother. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, David, you are, you've been a panelist at several different um, Comic Cons now, and yeah. actually you'll be presenting in that location yeah. tomorrow as well. <laughs> maybe if you can share about what you're presenting tomorrow, maybe some of the things that, um, uh, some of the things that you like to bring to the Comic Con. Yeah, sure. So tomorrow we're doing a Geek Ed presentation on uh, caring for the nerd mind. So it's a focus on mental health working with students, but we'll talk a little bit about students and also maybe staff as well who are helping or in helping professions in student affairs and doing work with students who may be needing uh, extra advice on mental health care and just wellness overall. And so uh, you're presenting with that, that tomorrow at the library, there's a number of student affairs professionals, higher education, yeah. maybe some faculty as well. Um, who are presenting. So this is something that happens every every year. Yeah, on. yeah. So I've been doing this since now, 2018. I got brought in by some uh, amazing people that uh, that you know and I know. Uh, Al Day among them, uh, Brian McDonald, Emily, Sa Emily Sandoval, uh, amazing people. Uh, we've done some past presentations on esports engagement. We've done uh, work on uh, civil dialogue. And some of my favorite ones actually were talking about Lovecraft Country and uh, uh, the Watchmen series on HBO. Uh, during uh, Comic-Con at home and watching and seeing how that kind of actually uh, touches our work and looks at pop culture and just really makes us think about so many different social issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to ask one final, actually, I'm going to ask a fun question for, for, for both of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, there's the educator intersection to Comic-Con, but there's also the pop culture. So when you, if you, when you go to Comic-Con and you're going just as a fan, what, what is it that you geek out on? <laughs> uh, for me, Star Trek for sure. Uh, I definitely did the Star Trek experience uh, in the in the captain's chair and all that, so it was a lot of fun to do that. And just watching everybody do cosplay, just kind of see their creativity shine. Um, so I talked about secret identities, and because I had gone to all these different, uh, so one of the things they did at that first Comic Con that they were at is you checked in, um, and then. 
I got them to sign my book and then they gave me this half sheet of paper that had all these different other creators that were present at different bo books that had contributed to it. And they said, if you get at least 10 of their signatures and bring this back, we'll give you um, this book plate that all of them contributed to. But I got all but three people to sign my book. <laughs> but what that meant is I, I spent a lot of time that my first year in the, um, the publishing section. There were different groups that were doing comics or other books and graphic novels and things like that. And that's the spaces that I like the most. Um, I found a lot of other books about other Asian American people and stories and things like that just because I was walking around and I saw something and said, oh, what's this? And turned it over. Um, I brought one of those authors to my campus uh, for our fifth the fifth anniversary of my office when we, you know, just because I found her book. She asked me, how did you find your book? And I was like, well, it's a Comic-Con. And uh, it was there and I saw it and I turned it over and said, oh, this sounds like my office. And I, I brought it home and read it. Um, and, and so that's one of my favorite things to do. And I, I'm also really good friends with one of those people who signed the book now. I, I um, had taken my book there, he signed it. I was looking at the rest of his art. Uh, I really liked it. I bought more stuff from them and I went back the next year and he's like, Wendy! So, <laughs> so we're friends now and I, I also help him in his booth so he can get a break and, and things like that. Too. That's awesome. That's Look who I just ran into. <laughs> Connor, introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, hi, Glenn. My name is Connor McLaughlin. I use he and they series pronouns. I work at San Diego State University as the staff learning and development specialist in our Center for Inclusive Excellence. And I also volunteer at Comic-Con in the studio relations department. Studio relations department. Um, Connor, tell me a little bit about what that means. And actually also share how many Comic-Cons have you been to? Uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Definitely. Uh, studio relations are the folks who help facilitate the experience of the studio and the talent that participate in Comic-Con. So when somebody comes to promote a movie or a television show or a, a comic book that they're working on, studio relations folks uh, work with them to make sure that they are met when they arrive at Comic-Con, that they have easy access to their holding room and other important facilities for staging their panels, and also making sure that they get to their panels on time and have the appropriate security with them to support their work. Wow, that's amazing. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of programs and events. And, and so tell me or tell our audience, obviously we're trying to demonstrate or show like how does Comic-Con intersect with student affairs, our student affairs profession, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, is it about education? Is it about presenting? What do you think it's about? I mean, I think it's about a lot of things for a lot of different people. And that's one of the great things about Comic-Con is people can get out of it anything that they're looking to get out of it. Some folks, uh, it started for me, and to answer your previous question, uh, I've been coming to Comic-Con since 2009, so I believe this is my 14th year coming to Comic-Con. Wow. And uh, I started because it was a way to engage you know, just my personal interests and do some things outside of my work environment, hang out with friends who weren't necessarily immediately connected to higher education and just to sort of scratch some of the other itches of things that I was interested in in my life. Uh, over time, more and more higher ed folks have started coming to Comic-Con and there's been an opportunity to, to integrate a little bit more and to not have them be separate pieces of my life, but to just have them be parts of my life that are in conversation. So for me, I get a lot out of it for that reason. Right, it's like that Venn diagram, like um, um, overlapping concentric circles, right? Yeah, and I also think about it as uh, you know a progression of identity development. You know, mm. I was very much a student affairs professional during the day, and I was a Comic Con person when I took my vacation. Now it's a little bit more. I'm a higher education professional who also goes to Comic Con, and these things kind of interact with one another as as they meet at at me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, one of the interesting things that we had uh, previously spoken about, you know, obviously we, you know, we, every time I come to Comic Con, we always meet up. And mm -hmm. so I love being able to spend time with you. And so over the years, has there been a, a panel or a, um, a, a, a program that you have attended that sort of illuminate like issues that maybe we as student affairs professionals in our professional side would address? You, you kind of referenced identity development, you kind of referenced, um, um, some other topics and issues, but is there one that sticks out for you that you would like to sort of kind of give an example? Yeah, so one of the one of the memories I have of one of the last Comic Cons I went to as just as an attendee before I started volunteering was taking the trolley here in San Diego down from my apartment down to downtown 
and was having this conversation with a person uh, who had put together a panel about the uh, Avatar The Last Airbender movie and the ways in which the creative and production team behind that movie had uh, whitewashed the cast and erased a lot of the spaces to uh, sort of promote and tell stories about Asian American people. Mm -hmm. And um, so listening to this person tell me about, you know, this other dimension of Comic-Con, this other side of Comic-Con that wasn't the Hall H line, that wasn't the exclusives on the exhibit floor, was really fascinating for me. It was really fantastic. I mean, I think I sort of maybe intellectually knew that these sorts of things were going on, but getting to sit down and have that conversation with somebody and have it be a conversation that met at the intersections of who we are and the things we're interested in uh, really, I think, sort of turned a corner for me in terms of what I was looking for at Comic-Con and knowing that there was more to find than just what's the new Marvel movie coming out or can I get a sneak peek at you know, uh, some something that I'm interested in so that I have like a cool story to tell. Right. Uh, the cool stories kind of became, oh, I had this really fascinating conversation you know, standing in line to pick up a an exclusive with this faculty member in communication studies from Australia about the ways that Australian English departments or Australian sort of rhetoric and writing departments are using comics in their curriculum and how that's different from some of what I've been seeing in the different curricular approaches to using comics and pop culture in U.S. universities uh, and just getting to connect around that. Also, that, that was a real story that did happen. And that person was the first person to get my wheels turning about how I might be able to use my professional development funds to go to Comic-Con or just support, you know, integrating Comic-Con and my work together. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a that's a that's an awesome drop hint for, for student affairs professionals or higher ed pros who are, in, who are thinking about Comic-Con as a possible way to learn. Actually, I want to um, have you illuminate on another topic that you just brought up that mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to anyone about. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the differentiations that occurs, uh, uh, one of the big differences at Comic-Con are the difference between big programs and sort of like the things at Hall H or Volume 20 versus the panels. Mm -hmm. The panels oftentimes get overlooked, but to me, that's where all the magic, you run into people, you network. It's it's the folks who really see this as an educate, educator type of conference. Can you kind of speak a little bit to that? Yeah, I mean, again, I think it goes back to being able to find whatever it is that you're looking for. And I think one of the things that also makes it great is it's going to offer you more than you have the capacity to do in any one year. Um, so, you know, if you you know, if there's a year where you want to spend all of your time in Hall H, fantastic. If there's a time where you really want to get down into like the small rooms in 22A or you want to see what's going on in 3C, um, you can do that too. Uh, same thing with the exhibit floor. You know, if you want to spend all of your time in the Funko line, fantastic. That There's space <laughs> for that. If you want to just spend your whole weekend in Artist Alley talking to people who are making, you know, really small, uh, really niche kind of things, uh, mostly by themselves and they're selling it themselves, awesome. There's plenty of space for that too. And there are even volunteer whole teams of volunteers that'll help facilitate that experience for you. Um, and so uh, I've kind of forgotten what the original question was, but I still think this is like getting at what I thought a good answer to your question no, it, was. It, it is. And it, I think it, it is the fact that like, you know, I, I remember going to um, uh, seeing some of the topics, you know, whether it's API identity mm -hmm. right now, um, there, we just, I just came out of a, a presentation on suicide prevention and bystander intervention mm. um, in some of the smaller panels versus if you go to like a big box, ones you're really getting the inside scoop on big films or movies or, or whatnot i know that volume 20 had lumpia the movie which is a, mm -hmm. um, a filipino pr uh, produced homemade video from way back that became a kickstarter and they just launched lumpia 2 mm -hmm. uh, or lumpia act of vengeance and for me as a filipino american there's a lot of pride in wanting to support watch view and and see that film so yeah. um when you are not volunteering when you are not um, when you're trying to take a break from it all, what is your favorite pastime here at Comic-Con for, for you personally? Um, my favorite pastime at Comic-Con outside of participating in Comic-Con is uh, doing things with my friends who are here. 
Uh, it's one of the only times I get a year I get to see some of my friends because they live in other countries or they live on the other side of this giant country. And so it's just a great opportunity to pull friends together and also to connect people. You know, it's also pretty rare that I get to say, hey, this is my friend who, you know, works in res life at UC Berkeley. And this is my friend who's an independent artist who makes a living selling his paintings. And having the opportunity to sort of participate in that kind of community building and to introduce people to one another, to make those sorts of connections, to make those sorts of new friendships and new opportunities uh, is really my favorite thing. Um, you know, and that can happen over dinner, that can happen over coffee. I, uh, but it's a lot of what I do in my professional life anyway. So it feels, <laughs> again, just like applying the same sets of skills to a slightly different arena. Connor, thank you for time and enjoy the rest of your time. Yeah, thanks so much, Glenn. It was great to get to chat with you. Okay, I just got out of this really cool panel. Um, and so I'm gonna have these two folks introduce themselves really quickly. Let's start with you. Hi, my name is Gerald Williams. I use she, her, and queen pronouns. I am the assistant director for student engagement and leadership at the Pace Center for Civic Engagement at Princeton University. Very cool. And? Hi, I'm Sunny Lee. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm at UC Berkeley. I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students. Now, the presentation of the panel that you both were just on um, at the San Diego Library Park Comic Con, what was, can you tell us a little bit about it? What was the title of it? And what was, what were you hoping to, um, the audience to get out of that panel discussion? So um, it's called Geek Ed the Marvels, um, and this was just a really amazing panel that brought together really awesome women of color leaders in higher education to talk about how geek and nerd culture and our passions um, influence the way we do our work, how we connect with students, how we find inspiration, um, what keeps us motivated, what lets us call people in and call issues out. Yeah, I would say. Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a really fun panel. Was there was there something that was shared in the panel that that just that you heard or that made you reflect on like that was really insightful, that was really kind of cool? Uh, I mean, just everybody had so much to share. Everybody could have had their own uh, fifty minute panel or um, prime time. Alex's comment at the end from Alex from AM, a uh, UCSC Santa Cruz when she said that she referred to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which, which I'm a huge fan of, and that we need more than one Slayer, that we need more Slayers out in the world to, to do the good work. And, and I really buy into that, that this is about um, community heroism. Um, you know, at the end, there isn't one bad guy or good versus evil, right? It, it's about, because uh, everybody thinks that they're the good guy coming from their perspective. And so for me, it's all about community building. And I think that's really relevant in, in higher education, especially coming out of COVID, where so many of our students and ourselves, we spent so much time isolated. Um, and, at, and I think an illuminating um, learning from that time, which, you know, we're still not completely out of, is that we're, we're social creatures. We need that human connection. Um, and it's so vital to uh, our health and so important to our thriving. So let's all be slayers. <laughs> I love that. Yes, that's true. the hashtag <laughs> for this one. Um, something that was really powerful for me um, was hearing my colleagues speak about um, mental health and talking about how mental health has been shown throughout um, media and particularly calling out like the movie Split in that it's kind of playing into particular tropes, but also kind of monstrifying um, people's experiences. And so really thinking about, you know, we're in a moment where we're talking more about mental health more than ever, and we need to be talking about it more, especially on college campuses. I think we are supposed to be preparing and supporting our students to go on and, and go forth and be, um, I don't necessarily say like healthier, like there's no perfect way to be healthy or happy, but to be able to um, be supported and take care of themselves and have community around them. And I think when we are ignorant or we allow kind of media to kind of run wild with these particular types of stories um, and stereotypes, it causes a lot of issues mm -hmm. because we learn so much about um, ourselves, about society, um, about communities through media. Like that's how we're learning, especially if you don't necessarily live right next to somebody that has a particular experience, or don't have somebody in your life, that that's what you're going based off of. Um, 
there's so much that can happen. There's so much that could be wrong there. And so I think there's responsibility to talk um, and delve into mental health in a lot of different ways. And there has been really wonderful work, but we also have to make sure we're staying away from things that vilify people, things mm -hmm. that um, allow more harm to happen. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think people are experiencing um, mental health, I don't say issues, but like mental health um, needs in a variety of ways um, a lot now, um, or even just being able to put it into words where there weren't necessarily words in the past and we shouldn't be creating media that like silences that. We should be creating media that allows us to ask questions, to ponder things, to show the full breadth of people's experiences. People can be monsters and have mental health issues, but it doesn't have to be that, you know, that that's the tie. Right, right. But I think there's more folks out there um, that are dealing with different kinds of things that, you know, are showing up and being parts of communities. And I think that's what we want our students to experience. We want our staff to experience. We want our communities on our campuses and our local um, areas to be able to feel supported and not, you know, shamed. That's amazing. So one of the things about this specific podcast is we're really trying to um, share with our audiences how Comic-Con really connects with student affairs professionals. And I, you know, in, in the 10 plus years I've been coming to Comic-Con, one, I've learned there's so many higher ed pros, librarians, educators who come to this conference, mm -hmm. and um, whether it's attending a program or a workshop, that's sometimes just tied to just what I'm interested in binge watching or mm -hmm. just checking out. But there's so many special topics out there, panels. Um, now, I'd like to ask, how many Comic Cons have you been to? If this is your first one, you know, or if, if this is your like Al Day is 25th, right? <laughs> or and and then. Has there been another workshop that you've been to or a panel that you've attended or something you've seen thus far at Comic-Con that you particularly find interesting that ties on to not only your personal but maybe professional life? Yeah. This is my first Comic-Con. And I've heard about it for years uh, from our friend and colleague Al Day from you, Glenn. Um, and I always thought it, it was always curious, but I never felt like it was my, it was my thing. Um, but I think having spent a few days here and also even just the prep leading up here, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I do belong. I'm much more of a geek than I thought it was because I didn't really know what that meant. Um, and so I feel like it's a convergence of just all my interests as a parent, right? Because I've gotten to know a lot more um, as a parent, but even before, well, I watched, I marathon watched all those shows like Buffy, you know, all, uh, and, um, I just didn't know that this was that this community was so uh, the range of what it means to be in this community is so large. So I attended some fantastic um, uh, sessions, uh, Asian Americans in comics, uh, K-pop in comics. Um, the first one was really touching, really hit home, uh, coping through grief through superheroes. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, this space is a lot more diverse in, in many ways, backgrounds, ages, generation, it just in, in so many, actually it might be the most diverse conference I've ever attended, um, abilities. Um, so uh, yeah, it was, um, I, I can completely see the connection and the parallels um, as an educator uh, to this work, to this world and as a parent and then also just for my own interests yeah so this is my third convention um i say that like i my like journey with comic-con is intrinsically connected to like the geek ed panels because the first time i came out here i was an undergraduate student and i was a student on a panel was talking about kind of like geek ed programming that was happening on my campus and how that connected to me and how i was exploring you know myself my leadership whoever I want to be through those programs and offering that also to my fellow students. Then my second time was when I was a graduate student. And so being able to kind of speak to it in a space where I am, you know, becoming an, a professional in higher education, um, but I'm also still a student myself, working in community. And now I'm back and I'm here as a, you know, full professional. <laughs> um, and able to offer another kind of different perspective in this. And so um, I just, I'm always been a nerd. We're a big, you know, nerdy family. Um, and it's always just wonderful to see spaces where like, you know, people are celebrated and connected um, and you get to just be passionate about, you know, what you love. Um, finding community in different ways where, you know, maybe that's not what you have in your hometown or maybe these are people you've only met online, but it's a space for you to come together and explore. Um, and I think I went to a session, it was actually another education session um, earlier this week, and it was um, librarians talking about like comics 
for civic engagement mm. and comics for um, community building and things like that. And so I was able to get a bunch of different recommendations about um, comics and graphic novels that are talking about and touching upon um, history and social issues in ways that I think are really powerful and interesting. Um, being somebody that works in terms of community, helping my students learn and engage in different ways is really important. And I think it's also that like, we live in a world where like pop culture is just like threaded through everything. Like you have to kind of know some of these things. <laughs> and it's also, it's a way of connecting. It's a way of having avenues into um, talking, talking about hard issues. It's a way of learning about things without having to ask the community to like lay out all their pain. If you can find a really good show, like I've recommended um, Reservation Doll for um, students that are really interested in learning about, you know, Native and Indigenous communities, um, and also understanding that, like, Native and Indigenous communities are here and they're thriving and they're, like, present. I think there's kind of that thing that, like, oh, they're gone or they're not here. But being able to see um, this wonderful, funny, deep show that's showing the perspective that I don't think is really that often seen on television, mm -hmm. and then being able to have them engage with that, um, is powerful in terms of representation, but also learning, but it's also not having them ask, you know, their native indigenous students to tell me like, what is it like, you know, here or there, um, but taking on their education in a fun and interesting way that's really powerful and then elevating really awesome um, voices. So I'm really excited to utilize some of those graphic novels and things like that in the future. Um, but there's so much that you can do here, oh, so many yeah. connections. It's a great way to also connect it's also a great way to connect uh, with your uh, students, obviously. Like, mm -hmm. it's a common language. It's Absolutely. definitely a common language of being a geek and a nerd. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, and um, and we'll see you all online. All right, thank you. Bye. And look who I've run into. Hey, so, <laughs> Hey, please introduce yourself to our listeners. Yes, hi, listeners, and hi, everybody on YouTube. My name is Don Lee. My pronouns are she, they. I'm currently the interim chief diversity officer at San Jose State University. And who are you? I'm Rod Santos. Hey, everybody, everyone in higher ed. Um, I'm the dean of enrollment services at Contra Costa College. Is he and his friends? Now, you two have unique experiences here at this convention. Don, this is your... It's my first time. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I don't know if y'all have ever gone to a Comic-Con. I mean, I just feel a lot of regret that I haven't come here sooner because this place is amazing, all right? And I had no, I was not prepared at all. And this this place is like amazing. I love everybody here. So I highly encourage everybody in higher ed to check out Comic-Con. Now, Rod, you've been to, you actually, you were one of the people who actually did my orientation to my very first Comic-Con over a decade ago, so. Yeah, I, I, I call Comic-Con my Mecca, my geek Mecca, and I've been attending since 2009. <laughs> Now, both of you just came out of a presentation you both did. Yeah. So, Don, can you start telling the listeners, what did you present on here at this convention? Yeah, so we literally just finished the panel, right? It was a panel with two creators, um, Eric Wynn, Pornsack and Chishok, and they're both creatives um, who do comics with Asian American narratives and characters. And then we had three higher ed professionals, Rod being one of them, and we talked about Asian American narratives and comics and graphic novels and the life that these narratives take on their own, but we specifically focused on the impact of these narratives during the COVID pandemic. I asked some questions, including, well, how did these narratives change for you during the pandemic, especially with anti-Asian violence and anti-Asian hate? And it was just I don't know, what did you think? It was what, amazing. What's the answer to that question, Rod, that you shared? Oh yeah. Um, it's a really hard question to answer because I was so fanboying over the two creators that we had. Uh, Pornsack just won the Eisner Award last year for The Good Asian uh, as Best Writer. He's a screenwriter. He's worked for Vertigo. He works on the Sandman book right now. And then Eric Nguyen, he worked on Old Man Logan and for Marvel. He worked on all these other things. So honestly, I was trying to like get, get my act together to make sure that I knew what I was talking about and not making sure I wasn't fanboying too much up there. I think I did okay. Yeah, well, you, you were, yeah, you kept her cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. Don, early on, you said Asian representation matters. So yes. can either one of you speak to that really well? Yeah. Especially at a convention like Comic-Con. Yes, it definitely matters. So our three folks, right? Um, one of them, Wendy Sasaki, who's at UC San Diego, and 
is the director of the Asian American and Pacific Islander, the PETA Center. Mark Bartell, who is at University of Illinois in Chicago, teaches Asian American studies and abroad here, right? Asian representation definitely matters because from these three folks, we heard how, how these comics and graphic novels enable people to not only reflect on their own identities, but engage in conversations with others, especially um, when some of them were experiencing very difficult things during the pandemic, like um, anti-Asian violence, was trying to make sense of experiences, prior experiences with things like police violence. These are entry points that occur because the characters are there and the stories are there. Yeah. And I, I talked about Shang-Chi and how that has been like a, an entrance to a narrative about what it means to be API and that it's actually in front of us. It's in movie theaters. It's um, it allows my students and they formed an API student organization to talk about these things and to talk about the issues that are pertinent to themselves and their families. And so uh, over the past couple of years, especially post pandemic, all my students, that's what we talk about. What's what kind of comics are you into? What kind of comic book movies are you into? And then we go into conversation about something serious. So I think that's been what's so amazing about this whole process and this panel. It was amazing to put that out there. Yeah. And for so these creators to be with us too. That was unbelievable to have the creators on the panel with you. So in 2020, I did an episode called Geeks in Higher Education. It was, the number, it was like the second episode we've ever launched on Student Affairs Now. And one of the interesting things that had panelists of Student Affairs professionals who were involved with Comic-Con. And it was, what's a, what one of the things that I really tried to drive forward with the listeners was the number of student affairs professionals, the higher education folks who come to this convention. So tell me a little bit more about like, why, why is there such a big connection between student affairs and a convention like this? I would say it's because of our narratives. Um, we talk about narratives and all the work that we do in higher education. Our narratives as practitioners are super important because they're important in describing those to our students to connect with. And when students are able to connect to that, they have a direct connection to us. They're able to reach out. They're able to tell us what's going on out there. It allows us to get a pulse of our students. I'm forever grateful for that. And I'm also super proud to be a queer geek as well. And uh, to be a queer API geek on top of that, it, it just means a lot to my students who identify with that as well. And you know, one thing I'll add is that here at Comic-Con, there are wonderful panels for student affairs professionals, for people who work in higher education. I can't wait to get to them and to hear. I mean, this is a very, very welcome place. And so, um, Rod is right. This is a wonderful place. And Don, you also have a podcast. You want to share that with us? I do. So if anyone's interested, I have a podcast called From Here Podcast. And I co-host it. And it's focused on Asian American parenting with anti-racist social justice commitment. So questions like, how do you talk to kid about your kids about racism? That's what we talk about on the podcast. All right. Well, thank you, too, for just dropping in and joining the, the little, little project that I'm putting together for Student Affairs Now. Um, have a great con. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right, this is something you don't do every day, but I've just run into two really cool people. And so really quickly, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Grace Bagunu. And I'm Andrew Morrell. Okay, so can you tell me a little bit of what you do? Uh, well, currently, I work as a program manager with the City of San Diego in the Department of Race and Equity. But I used to be at the University of California, San Diego with Ravel College as the Assistant Dean of Student Affairs. And you were then, you were basically, you're basically an expat. I am. You're an expat. <laughs> Andrew, what do you do? I'm the Community Service Program Manager at the Center for Student Involvement. And so I run community service programs for the entire university and MLK Day of Service. That's very cool. Now, both of you are Comic-Con attendees um, who we've been in the field or connected to the field of Student Affairs. How many comic cons have you been to? Too many to count. Too many yeah. to count. <laughs> About, I would, yeah, it's got to be 10. I think it's 10. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm here at Comic Con because, because basically I want to know, like, why do student affairs professionals come to this convention and, and is there value or do you see any connection to coming to this convention and, and to folks who are in student affairs? That's wow. a tough question. That's a deep question. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's really about community. And so I think 
as a student affairs professional, I was always working to create community and to create space, especially for people who maybe felt marginalized or weren't at the table. And I feel like the con is that place where those of us that are at the margins, maybe a little geeky, a little nerdy, a little weird, like we find our home and we find our people here. And so it feels very comfortable, it's inviting, it connects like each other, you feel like you belong. And I think that's part of my work, especially in race and equity, is really about like, how do we help people feel like they belong here? Because there's room for all of us. And I think that's what this con really brings out is that there is space for all of us. It's like creating, uh, it's like that, it's mattering. It's creating mattering yeah, moments. And, and exactly. Despite the fact that there's a lot of marginality that occurs. Exactly. Andrew, some thoughts, like how does this tie into your work? Well, I'm gonna take a different approach. I think for me, it's, it's really kind of keeping a pulse of what maybe my students might be like, you know, consuming or maybe what they're interested in. So I think like Comic Con for me, like really does help me stay engaged and connected to like the things that are coming out and what my students may be interested in. It's also great too to connect with them on like such a personal level, you know, like, you know, a lot of them don't know that I do this actually. <laughs> when they see me, they see me as this like serious person, but really like I'm kind of a goofball outside of work. And so like, yeah, so these are one of the things that I enjoy. Um, normally I have my kids too. So they've been coming the last, I think three years. So yeah, so it's been really exciting. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's really just about you know, making sure that like I understand what's going on and stuff, so that I can better connect with my students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so any advice for any student first professionals if they come to the con? Hmm, wear good shoes. <laughs> wear good shoes. You'll want to walk them, for sure. <laughs> now, Grace, you, I want to give you a, an opportunity to kind of pitch something that you do. It's sort of like a creative, creative uh, work that you do. Yeah, it's my creative outlet is what I would call it. I love to problem solve. I probably learned that in student affairs too. Um, but I love to create new things out of old things, which is I take old Comic-Con bags that they give away for free here at the con, and I upcycle them into something else, maybe a reusable bag or a skirt or a pillow, something to commemorate the con. Um, but it's also a great way to keep things out of landfill. So doing my part, maybe, uh, in reducing the waste that goes out into the world and really creating something beautiful out of something that really is an everyday use kind of thing. So yeah. I have a table at the art show, which shows up at the Grand Hyatt every year. Um, and you can go there, there's a silent auction, you can purchase things, and then if not, if you didn't see anything on my table that you didn't like, or maybe you want something different, um, I can always uh, do a commissioned piece for you. So you can find me on Instagram at Grace Bagoonin. And we'll have your information on our website for, for our listeners to kind of yeah. if you want to check it out. Um, I was gonna I was gonna say that, yes, that is really cool that you do that. We did an episode on side hustles about a year ago oh, yeah. we talked about what student affairs professionals need to do to make the dollar oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. because we know about the pay in our oh, field, yeah. right? So yes. so that's an interesting, cool side hustle and I appreciate you sharing that. We'll put your information online. Awesome. And I want to hit something that you, you just said you brought your kids, you're bringing your kids. Now my kids have been to 10 Comic Cons as well. So as a parent bringing your kid, what do you hope your kid will gain from coming to Comic Con? I mean, really, for me, it's it's the experience, right? Like like being able to be exposed to so many different things, you know, and and like them making the connection of the things that they may be watching on TV or in movies and stuff, and actually connecting here, you know, with with all the different panels and all the activities. I think it's also cool too that they get to see sometimes their 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 heroes or their sheroes, right? That you know that they may be looking at. And so, like, I remember one year, I think it was um, it was um, Owlette from um, from PJ Masks. And so, um, yeah, my, my daughter um, was such a big fan of Owlette, and her, the real name of her is Amaya. She actually named her younger sister Amaya because of Owlette. Yeah, no so way. I thought that was really cool. No way. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna, <laughs> quick, quick story, my, my yeah. daughter at a Lego um, panel yeah. um, asked, she got in the long line, she was, I don't know, like seven, and she asked the question, why are there no girl um, um, Ninjago's, etc. Oh. And and the, the panel went, the audience crazy. The panel went even more ballistic because they released was... they released a female character the following year. Not to say she was the reason, yeah. but made her feel like really mm. dumb because she was talking about representation. Yeah, yeah. Cartoon. So yeah. Kind of I think cool. I was at that. <laughs> you were at that. And that was like three was years too. ago, right? It was, no, it was. was Right, it was before the it pandemic. It was before the pandemic. So it was the 2019. It I think I went yeah, to I that. Was, yeah. So that little mm -hmm. girl wearing the 
axe cock. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, I appreciate you two coming on really quick. And um, and so just say hello to all the listeners. And um, again, Bye, Student everyone. Affairs at Comic Con San Diego. Well, this is me wrapping up. Um, it's final day of Comic Con. I've had such a blast interviewing so many Student Affairs professionals out here today. So I just want to say thank you, um, Nat, in advance. Um, you're a producer. You're going to have a fun time editing all these videos. So I thank you in advance and continue the great work that you do. I want to thank all the different guests um, out there. There are so many folks I ca that I interviewed that um, we're going to put all their information in the website. So thank you to them as well. And, and, and of course, our sponsors. Um, I want to make sure that I thank Simplicity um, as a global leader in students, uh, student services technology platforms with state-of-the-art technology that empowers institutions to make data-driven decisions um, specific to their goals, a true partner to the institution. Simplicity supports all aspects of student life, including but not limited to, to career services and development, student conduct and well-being, student success and accessibility services. To learn more, visit simplicity.com. That's S Y M P L I C I T Y.com. Or you can connect with them on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for uh, bearing with this unique, different type of Student Affairs Now episode. Um, so, listeners, make sure you're subscribed to our MailChimp if you aren't. And uh, farewell from San Diego Comic Con International. Bye, everybody. <laughs>